What's good, Detroit Sports Nation? I am Eric Vincent, your host here at the DNC News Desk. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your time and support as we have a very encouraging update from the Detroit Lions front, straight from Dan Campbell himself today, regarding the health status of three different players, three very important players that could change maybe a lot of different things for this team. So Dan Campbell spoke today and said, defensive end Romeo Aquara, wide receiver DJ Shark have both been removed from the injured reserve list from the team, and they were practicing today, active on the field, and they're looking to get back in game shape as soon as possible. I don't believe he specified on a return date in terms of what game they'll be in, but they are trying to get them back as soon as possible, which is very, very encouraging news, and we'll get into it a little bit. One more player he spoke on was maybe the most anticipated name of the season for the Detroit Lions in wide receiver Jamison Williams. Still ramping up and recovering from his knee injury from college. Dan Campbell says they're looking at December for a return date for him. Again, no specific date, no specific week, no specific game. Just said December is the timeline that they're looking on. They said he hasn't had any setbacks. He's been making nothing but progression in his recovery, and they're just waiting to get finalized and make sure everything is on the up and up to get him back on the field. Now, those are three huge names, I believe, for this team. In terms of what we're seeing from the Detroit Lions right now, who are currently sitting on a 2K win streak. So I can't help but to ask the question, and I would like to hear your feedback. Please talk to me in the comments and let me know what you think. As the Lions are now ramping up, Getting to a point where they're as, I don't want to say they're at full strength, but they're as healthy as they've been all season, given the injuries that they've had on both sides of the football. Now that they're approaching full strength, do you think this changes expectations? Have your expectations now changed for maybe the second or third time about this team? We all came into the season hype about what the future and maybe even this season could be in a weak NFC, which is exactly what we're seeing right now. There were a lot of possibilities for this team. What we've seen thus far, we can absolutely confirm. The Lions, I believe, what we've learned so far, they're young, they're inexperienced, and I think it's fair to say they can compete with anybody as long as they're not beating themselves. Now, I know that's a mouthful for a young, inexperienced team, but you can tell the difference between a team that ain't got no talent and a team that just needs some experience and some discipline and a been-there-done-that attitude to know how to win games in close situations. And that's what the Lions have struggled with all season. So, now that they're approaching a position where, again, they're getting to this health status of being as healthy as we've seen all season. So, again, let's run through what we know. Romeo Aquara, a big-body defensive end, uh, his brother Julian O'Quarr had a huge impact last week in sacking Justin Fields twice, including the defensive clinching sack that got the Bears off the field and got the Lions on back on offense to ice the game on the road and get Dan Campbell his first road victory as a Lions head coach. He played a huge part of that, and I believe Romeo O'Quarr can play a huge part in that because as we also see Charles Harris getting a little bit more ramped up and involved. We see Aiden Hutchinson playing some of the best ball of his young career as a rookie right now, where he's, again, trying out different positions, lining up on the inside, not just lining up in a three technique, but trying a two-point stance where he seems more effective. And we see his rushes, and we see his dominance throughout the game, not just in spurts, but consistently quarter to quarter ramp up. We're seeing it happen, and we're seeing it get to a point where He's showing what that talent and that potential could look like. And it can only get higher when you have more talent around him. So a Romeo Aquara being back healthy could be huge for this defense. It could be huge for the secondary that needs help as they're still trying to get healthy. It's huge for them. So that's a big pickup to get Aquara back on the field. DJ Shark is another name. I've been open. I've been talking about it. If you watch me on Beyond the Box uh, Mondays with AJ, I've talked about how disappointed I've been Romeo, or excuse me, with DJ Shark. I've talked about how disappointed I've been with DJ Shark, and I even tweeted about it. It got got ratioed bad about it. I said, when he comes back, I am at a point where I'm going to have low expectations for Shark. Because on a one-year prove-it deal, seeing how maybe he was a little underutilized with the Jags, with some of the highlights we saw from him in training camp, and we saw the ability for him to develop some kind of rapport with Jared Goff, We didn't really see a whole lot of that consistently in the regular season. He's dropping a lot of passes. 
Um, he really wasn't getting as involved consistently as you would want. He had maybe one game where I believe it was the first game of the season where he like, what, four or five catches for a touchdown? And outside of that, he's just kind of dipped and dipped and dipped from there. And now, obviously, he's been hurt, but now he's looking to come back. Now, during the ratio, they explained to me how his impact, fans explained to me how his impact was bigger than just being able to catch passes. They said, you know, he's very good at running deep balls and, you know, being able to spread out and create enough attention on himself to take away from other receivers, which is true, and I understand that. I would not disagree with that at all. That's supposed to be one of the biggest things that drew DJ Shark or drew the Lions to DJ Shark services in the free agency because he was able to stretch the field. But here's something that we know. Here are two things that we know. While he's drawing attention away from other receivers to get other guys active, guys like Amara St. Brown have shown that they can do that whether they have attention drawn away from them or not. He's shown that he's been able to do that consistently as long as he's on the field. Now, again, we also know that Jamison Williams, at least in terms of maybe his ceiling, it should be higher potentially than a DJ Shark. Now, again, it's maybe unfair to say that because we haven't seen William play yet. But from what we've seen and knowing the upside that this guy does come with, it's fair to say that he should eclipse a DJ Shark. Because if what you're telling me, what fans were telling me on Twitter, is that his best attribute right now is being a decoy for other guys, that's not necessarily a good thing. He had, I think, a drop every game he's played in this season. Maybe two each game. Like, he has not been consistent enough or reliable enough for Jared Goff. He doesn't have the strongest arm, but you have to be able to rely on him to make big plays and open things up for the guys around him because now you have young tight ends. You don't have a a, a veteran like TJ Hawkinson who couldn't maneuver around and find ways to get open. You have young tight ends who are trying to learn. You have Amarase Brown in his second year. You have Jamison Williams who's coming in in his first bit of action as a rookie. You're going to need him to be productive In ways that are bigger than just being a decoy. You have to be able to make catches as well to be able to draw the attention away from other receivers. It can't just be because you're super fast and running down the field quick. You got to be able to make catches as well so defenses take you serious. So if that's going to be the impact, that's what they're going to be waiting for. And we haven't seen that enough from DJ Shark. Hopefully at this point when he's recovered from this injury, maybe that's what we get to see from this team. We're still waiting. We're not 100% sure what he's going to look like yet. Hopefully, it's better from what we saw at the start of the season. At least that's just my opinion on it. And again, we talked about Jamison Williams just there. He's, again, the most anticipated name for the Detroit Lions, probably next to an Aiden Hutchinson. You know, we were super hyped, hyped to see Hutch just because he's from Michigan, just because of what we've seen and how bad this defense has been as well. Luckily, we've been able to get over on not having Jamison Williams on the field because you, at certain points, had a top three offense that was operating. And they still have shown the ability to be that explosive with the two-headed monster of DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams when Swift is healthy and operating okay on the field healthy. Um, When you have the other receivers getting involved, St. Brown still looks like he's clicking on all cylinders and has a good rapport with Jared Goff still to this day. So as long as those guys are still getting active and the offensive line being, to me, the strongest unit of the entire team on either side of the ball, as long as you have that foundation set with a run game, reliable receivers who can catch the ball and get open, and offensive line that can protect him, him and Jared Goff, then you have the very least, maybe not be consistently elite, but functional. You should have a very functional offense because you have balance on all levels. You don't have the best quarterback to operate with, but you have an offensive line that's doing a good job of protecting him, and he has more than enough weapons to be able to take advantage of the defensive oppositions that he should be facing. So again, let's get to the point again. Do you think this changes the expectations of this team? Because as they sit right now, they're 12th in a week NFC. They're officially in the bubble. I think they're the fourth team on bubble watch as of right now because, again, it's, what, seven teams in the playoffs now. And I don't know how many teams you want to count in the bubble. But, again, Lions are 12th as of right now for where it sits. There are some tough games on their schedule, but there are some winnable games coming up on their schedule. And, again, to me, I think we've learned that they do have the capability of, at the very least, competing with anybody Now, there have been some eggs, obviously, they've laid. Obviously, against the Patriots is going to be as bad as it gets. Losing to a 
backup, backup quarterback with, you know, the limited weapons that they have, losing to Matt Patricia, and all the all the tragedy that happened against New England. I don't think it's going to get worse than that this year, at least for the rest of the year for this team. And all right, I'm going to say it out loud. It changes my expectation again. I got to say it. I got to be real because we've gone through waves with this team. I came in here, y'all see me chugging Honolulu blue Kool-Aid, pouring up so much optimism after hard knocks, and I fell for it. And now after they went on these slides and they had the, what, five-game losing streak in the middle before they just went on this two-game winning streak, they look terrible in a lot of different ways with a historically bad defense and a lot of other things that were not working. But what I've always said in terms of this season could be what the Lions end up being at the end of this season when they have their players healthy and on the field. If you can put out a close to elite offense from what the Lions have right now, which they've shown consistently that they can do, you can rely on that to an extent. Defensively, you have to be able to, again, bend but don't break. Get off the field when you have to. Make plays when you have to. Bring Justin Fields down on the third or fourth down to make sure he doesn't do anything to extend plays. Don't hurt yourself with penalties. Don't hurt yourself with dumb mistakes being out of position. Lions did a good job on a lot of defensive plays, I believe, outside of being able to not get off the field on third down. But in terms of switching and a lot of the scheming that they did, in terms of defending the Bears, they did a really good job. They just weren't able to make tackles and bring the guys down as explosive as Justin Fields looked on a lot of plays. They weren't able to wrap up on a lot of tackles. But they got off the field when they needed to. And that is the key. You have an offense as good as this. I think the Lions will be efficient enough that they can maybe... Not make the playoffs, but again, can you play some important games down the stretch? Can you give us a reason to watch this product for more than just draft positioning? Because we've been doing that for 10 years. We've been going down that path for the longest. And we still kind of on it now. Not because of just the struggles, but now the Rams are playing terrible. The Rams look horrible right now. They're, they're hurt everywhere, and they haven't really been effective in protecting Matthew Stafford getting off the field in terms of with their defense or being consistent offensively outside of Stafford and Cooper Cup. This team has been inconsistent all season and their position right now to give the Lions a top 10 draft pick as it sits right now. So it's kind of hard not to be in draft mode, but it's also hard to not sit here and think when they have games like the Giants, who I don't believe in, the Buffalo Bills, who are reeling, they have the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I don't believe in, Minnesota at home, the Jets, and the Carolina Panthers, as well as the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers to close off in two division games. The two teams you just beat. It, it, <laughs> it makes it interesting, and I'm, I, I'm not trying to sell hope. I ain't trying to sell dreams. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings anymore. We did that enough to start off a of hard knocks. But the... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're getting interesting, man. This is the perfect time to be getting healthy just off your bye week a couple weeks ago. You're starting to hit a bit of a rhythm. You're starting to get some super important pieces in a very weak NFC. Lions might make some noise to close. Who knows? Who knows with this team? Again, they're unexperienced, but it's going to be at least interesting to see that they're doing it at full strength for the first time all season. We haven't seen Jameson Williams. We haven't seen DJ Shark for an extended period of time. Haven't seen Romeo Okwara. It's going to be great to see them all back with a budding team with a lot of momentum right about now. It's going to be great to watch. Let me know how you're feeling in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Talk to me. Let me know what are your expectations as the Lions are entering a stretch where they're getting as healthy as they've been all season. What are your expectations now that that will be possibly on the table with this team? Talk to me in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. And again, make sure you like the channel. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel as we inch closer and closer to 5,000 subscribers to hit that awesome milestone. Thanks to your amazing support. So if you're new to the channel, you're checking us out, you're not locked in, make sure you subscribe so you can stay locked so we can get this content your way. Make sure you're checking us out on our social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the above. Search and follow Detroit Sports Nation. And follow me as well at I am Eric Vincent. 
Thank you all so much for tuning in and being here at the DSN News Desk. We are going to be unrolling some new ideas and a new way to bring some coverage to the News Desk. I can't wait to tell you more about it soon. Make sure you stay locked in with us. But in due time, I'll be right back with another update right here for the DSN News Desk. Peace.